Good evening, everyone. So everyone having a good time? Lots of smiles. I'd like you to stop having a good time. I'd like you to put on your serious face. I'd like you to look at this lady. She's sick. She's rocked up to ED. Doctors don't know what's wrong with her. They're going to take a blood test. They're going to send it up to the pathology lab. A couple of hours, maybe, they'll have the results. A couple of hours is a really long time if someone's really ill. Now, at the same time, if we wanted to just find her blood sugar levels, we could rock up with a little portable device in a matter of minutes have the result. Now, what about if we had a similar tool at triage when she came in? We could find out in a matter of minutes if she was about to, say, have a heart attack. Or we could have a desktop one that could tell us if a cancer patient was in remission. Now, imagine if those tools are cheap. They're wide, ranging everywhere from GP clinics to Royal Flying Doctor's Service. Now, if we could do that, we could actually change how we treat people in hospitals and how we treat people in remote countries, sorry, remote areas and even developing countries. Now, if we're going to do this, we need an automated tool to detect disease. And generally what we do is we want to find a certain protein, maybe, that's at elevated levels when you have a certain disease. Problem is, if that protein's in blood or in urine or in saliva, there's lots of other stuff in there. So scientists have come up with a way which appeals to me because I'm a physicist, to isolate it, isolate this protein. That's stick a magnet on it. Now, if we can find the magnet, we can find the protein, we can have a good idea of what's wrong with this person. Of course, proteins are small, so we need small magnets. But chemists can make small magnets. These are 100 nanometers. We can go 20, 25 times smaller if need be. But small magnets need small sensors. Now, the current sensors are kind of like electronic compass needles. Imagine the needle and it moves slightly and then we detect that electronically when a particle comes along. What we are doing at the School of Physics, and this is research which is now funded by the Australian Research Council and the US Air Force, is to look at vibrating compass needles. And these are nanoscale compass needles. If we can do this and actually make these work, then it's going to overcome limitations of current detector technologies. We can make smaller sensors, we can make faster sensors, and these are going to be faster because the needles are going at around about a billion times a second. To test this out, we're making devices, we're measuring, in, measuring them in the lab, and we're running simulations on supercomputers. So a lot of the work is really physics-y. We're trying to understand the devices, test them, and optimize them. And if they're as good, as sensitive, and as fast as we think they will be, we've got a good chance of not only um, contributing to point-of-care diagnostics, but also making cheaper tools for medical research. So think about the vibrating nanocompass and hopefully helping out with diagnostics, and I'll thank you for your valuable time. Cheers. <laughs>